Ladies and gentlemen, it's an absolute privilege to be back with you. I know I was MIA for a while. I'm not going to bore you with the details, but let's get right back into these videos. Today's video is an exciting one. I'm going to teach you how to read your opponent effectively. And by the end of this video, you're going to have far more clarity around how to anticipate where your opponent's going to hit the shot. So if you find yourself getting flat footed, if you find yourself getting beat and totally confused as to where your opponent's going to hit the ball, I'm going to teach you exactly what you need to focus on in order to be able to anticipate more effectively. So when it comes to anticipation, we're really talking about effective decision making. So the top players in the world have so much experience in seeing their opponents in certain positions. They have such a deep understanding of what options are available from certain positions and they understand exactly what to think about. Now, they're not consciously thinking about all of these nuances and layers upon layers in the middle of a match. It's through practice, through conscious development in practice and in training that they have reached the point where they've created these chunks in their mind. So there's this theory of chunking that they've tested out with chess masters where they took these grandmasters and they essentially created these multiple chess scenarios on different boards. Some of them were completely random. Others were common chess scenarios. And the grandmasters were able to recall the common chess scenarios, multiple common chess scenarios with ease, whereas the total random chess scenarios were the ones that they had no idea how to recall. So the, the idea here is that there's this component of memory when it comes to that random scenario, or there is the pattern that someone is accustomed to seeing. So with adequate training, you can also train your brain to be able to immediately recognize a pattern. So in chess, it might be the knight being on a certain piece at a certain position, the rook is in a certain position, the pawns are in a certain position, the bishop is here, the king is here, the queen is here, and all of a sudden the player, the grandmaster knows that this is a position where this is the most likely scenario, this is my advantage, this is when I should attack, this is what I need to defend, this is what my opponent's next move is going to be, etc, etc. That's something that's imprinted in their brain, it's chunked. So as soon as they see the board, all those things are at their disposal. So in squash, and in, in everything really, what we're trying to do is reach the level where we have chunked these scenarios in our mind. So when you see an opponent in position X, your brain is automatically picking up, okay, ball is as you can see from your screen, point number one, ball is this tight to the side wall, which automatically means that the cross court is very unlikely, unless you're playing Ali Farag, who can snap that ball cross even when it's really, really tight to the side wall. What does that mean? It means that you can adjust your T position a little bit towards the side at which the ball is already on because the angle is very difficult to hit. If the ball, if your opponent is approaching with a particular body angle, if you can see that they're hitting the ball either early or late, all of these things give us cues as to where the next shot is about to go. And then of course, if you study your opponent and you have, a, have an understanding of their tendencies, whether you're playing someone who loves to counterattack or you're playing someone who loves to just lift the ball and reset, putting it all together, if you have a clear understanding of options available based on the tightness, the depth, the height, the speed, etc. of the shot that you've hit. That's one piece of information you need to process. You need to process your opponent's typical tendencies based on their skill level, based on the patterns they like to play. Personality also comes into this among other things. And then you have to be able to see their approach, their body angle, their contact point, all of those things. And when you can put all of that together, your brain can create this picture. Now you have to train all of this, like I said, in practice through different scenarios. You could be doing something simple like um, someone's in the back of the court, someone's in the front of the court, and each player has an option between two shots. Well, now you have to be able to see, okay, well, when they hit the straight drive out of the front court, their body's angled this way. When they hit the cross court, they're usually angling this way. Their contact point is this or that. When they're under pressure, they have a tendency to lift cross and not straight so I can poach over for the cross, et cetera, et cetera. So you're putting all of these pieces of information together through drills like that, eventually progressing it into more open scenarios. Okay, I've spoken a lot, so let's check out the clips. 
You see three clips on your screen. We're gonna play them simultaneously. I'll play them at half speed and then I'll really slow it down and show you the nuances that we just spoke about a moment ago. So through the first run through, I'm not gonna comment. I'm gonna to try to hold my tongue and then we'll get into the commentary with the super slow-mo. So take a look and I'll play it over a couple of, maybe three times so you can get a sense of each one of them. And we'll do this at half speed. So here we go. Let's check it out again. Half speed. And one last time, coming in at half speed. Here we go. Okay, now let's break it down in super slow-mo. So the first thing we'll see, we talked about the tightness of your opponent's shot. So if you see the ball that Diego's approaching, the video on the left, the ball's come off the sidewall a little bit. He's not under a tremendous amount of pressure. He's also read it pretty early, so he's approaching it. The clip in the middle, the ball's looser in the court, but he seems to be stretching a little bit faster because Asal hit it a bit harder. And the clip on the right, he's read it, he's reaching it, but the ball's quite tight to the sidewall. Okay, so based on what we just spoke about a few minutes ago, the options that he has, when the ball is, again, right clip, when the ball is this tight to the sidewall, he doesn't have an easy angle. So in all likelihood, he's going to hit this ball straight down the line. As a result, and we're gonna talk about the implications for Mustafa Asal as well in each of these scenarios. As a result, you see that Asal is a fair bit over to the left side wall because he's not as threatened by the right side of the court, given how tight his shot is. If you look at the middle of the court, the mid video here, the ball is fairly loose, loose off the side wall, fairly short, kind of ending up in no man's land. So Asal has to be far more neutral because Ilyas has several options from this position. And then the clip on the left, you see that the ball is again, not super tight, but not super loose. Ilyas has some options, but Asal isn't overly concerned with the cross court threat given his T position in this case. So you see neutral, but slightly over. Middle clip, far more neutral because it's a looser ball. Right clip, far more over to the left because it's a tight ball. So that there is how you can discern whether you need to cover both sides of the court or just one side of the court based on the quality of your hitting. Now the next thing is body angle and body position. So you'll notice in these, in the f first two clips, left and middle, I played it faster to show you guys, Ilyas goes and hits the cross court. So now when he's hitting this cross court, you can see a couple of things. What's different between Ilyas's body in this left clip, the middle clip, their similarity here, and difference in the right clip? One of the things is the body angle and the direction in which he's stepping. So you see in these first two clips, left and middle, he's stepping slightly diagonally forward. In the right clip, he's stepping across. In the left two clips, he hits the ball slightly in front of his body in line with this forward diagonal movement. In the right clip, he's hitting the, line in line, the ball in line with his front leg. So that subtle shift in body position from being totally facing the side wall to being at a slight angle is part of the tell when it comes to straight, cross, contact point, sort of, if I show you this way, contact point here, straight, contact point out here, cross. And then the third piece is going to come back to Ilias's tendencies. So does Ilias like to reset the ball straight? Does he like to reset the ball cross? Does he like to counterattack from these positions like what we see here in the left, uh, left video clip here or in the middle clip video clip? Does he like to counterattack? Does he like to play angles from this position? All of those things will also determine Mustafa Asal's T position and the follow-up shot. So as you can see, if we go through this clip, in both cases, the left and the middle, Asal automatically starts going for that cross based on Ilyas's tendencies, contact point, body angle. Um, and whereas in the clip on the right, we saw that he was already poaching a bit to the left of the court because the ball was so tight. 
and of course he anticipated correctly and gets ready to volley this one gets ready to volley the first clip here on the cross Elias does well to get height and recover and then he's getting ready to hit the ball in the middle as well so some coaching points we talked about this at the beginning but you must just practice over and over but you have to practice effectively if you're doing the wrong thing you're going to develop the incorrect habit. So you have to practice correctly. I remember Mike Way, one of my mentors said that perfect practice makes perfect. Practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Practice makes permanent. So whatever you practice is gonna become permanent. If you are practicing incorrectly, the incorrect thing is gonna become permanent. That's not what we want. So get some feedback from a coach, I always suggest if you're interested in working with me, reach out to me at ahadarperformance.com. If you get the correct information, get the correct feedback early on, you can develop the skill effectively. Now, when it comes to reading your opponent, you have to be able to create the scenario to force your opponent into certain positions. Sure, you can read and be reactionary, but the ultimate goal is to create a scenario and then anticipate effectively. So we saw Mustafa Asal in those videos, he was hitting a straight kill every time on the backhand side, trying to squeeze the ball to the sidewall and force Ilias into some form of loose ball. So what can you do? You can make sure that you have multiple options from different parts of the court so that you have several ways to set up or to construct a rally. The straight kill example of Ilias is one. You hit the straight kill, squeeze your opponent. If it's glued to the wall, you've eliminated the cross court, so you cover the one side. If it's close but not glued to the wall, chances are opponent's going to try to lift cross, so then you're hunting the weak cross court to volley straight into the open space. Similarly, you can set up patterns and combinations with other shots. Then once you have different options, and you're going to practice one at a time, once you have an option that you're practicing, look and see what responses your opponent has to that. So do they always go into that front left corner when you play the straight kill and just try to counter drop? Or do they always go and try to cross court lob even when it's not the right time to do so? That's gonna start giving you some information about your opponent's natural tendencies and where you can then position yourself to cover the most likely shot. And of course, if you're ever watching your peers play, try to anticipate and try to figure out what shot they're about to hit based on everything we just talked about in this video. It's a really, really effective way to start developing your anticipation skills by creating those chunks in your brain that we talked about earlier. And finally, if you receive value in this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Please leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you and answer any of your questions. Do share the video with a family or friend or someone who enjoys squash and would benefit from it. And if you really want to take your game to the next level and you're keen and you're committed and you understand the value of premium services, send me an email at aha.arperformance.com. I have a very, very in-depth coaching system based on video analysis and, and a whole bunch of other stuff that I have had a lot of success with, with many, many folks around the world. So reach out if that's something of interest. Folks, thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day, and I hope to see you sooner rather than later. Take care. Bye.